The Haikyuu manga is currently in the midst of a match that has all the makings of being among the best to take place in the series. A match that involves the MSBY Black Jackals and the Shrine Adlers is to go toe to toe in the V League with players involved that we the readers have close ties with. Among the many rivalries that are taking place in this match, the one we've been awaiting to see happen is surely one for the ages. Hinata Shoyo vs Tobio Kageyama. The two former Carson teammates are finally going to settle the score between each other to see who will remain on the court the longest. Now while this could allude to being the final phase of the story, what if I were to tell you that there could be more of the journey to experience depending on how all of this plays out. For the sake of the narrative, it makes sense to end things after this match since the score between Hinata and Kageyama will have reached a definitive outcome. However, there is still another part of the story that has been hinted at for some time that could still be a reality for Furudate to go on should they choose to do so. And that is why I'm here to tell you why the Olympics should be the final arc to end the Haiku story. Let's go. For everyone who has followed the Haiku story since the very beginning, it was set in stone since their first encounter that Hinata and Kageyama would enter a rivalry that would come to a head at some point in time. Despite these two becoming teammates shortly after, the competitive nature between them was still intense as they both pushed one another to achieve greater success during their time at Karasuno. And after many years of watching both of their stories unravel, it is all coming to a head with this match in the present day. When it comes down to why I'm the belief that an Olympics arc could still happen, let's go over some of the things that are taking place right now in the story that could play factors of the possibility of it happening. As of the recording of this video, the match between the Black Jackals and the Adlers is taking place in November of 2018. The Olympics take place in Tokyo from July 2014 to August 9th of 2020. That means we basically have less than 20 months before the Olympics begin. In our time, the Olympics take place in about 6 months at the time of this video. Buridate may have said this was the quote unquote final arc, however with the way that things are shaping up, this feels more like a saga seeing as this part of the story is now told in a different environment and setting compared to back then. The characters we knew at the start are now adults who have moved on in the next phase of their lives, some have stuck with volleyball and are playing professionally either within or outside of Japan, others have moved on and while they're not involved in the sport directly, they are keeping an eye on those who are still with it. This of course was all thanks to the time skip shortly after Nationals concluded. The story shifted to Brazil as Hinata went on a two year journey to hone his craft to prepare for a chance of making the V-League, but more importantly, to have a shot at making the national team. To me this feels like more of the end goal for Hinata now, rather than simply just defeating Kageyama. Yes, it was established at the start that these two would face off one day to settle the score, and the title chapter 378 was called the final boss, so it does seem like this could be the last battle for Hinata, but this could also mean that Kageyama is now the final obstacle in Hinata's path towards the national team. To make it, he must surpass the one he's been competing with and against since the first day they met. While the focus here, while it's primarily on them, it also involves others who have scores to settle that could determine some outcomes leading up to July 2020. Hinata, Bokuto, Sakuza, and Atsumu representing the Black Jackals, while Kageyama, Ushijima, and Hoshiyumi represent the Adlers. There are a ton of rivalries and first time encounters that are happening during this match outside of Hinata and Kageyama. I mean, we have the battle between Hinata and Hoshiyumi to make up for what happened back in Nationals. Asumu versus Kageyama to determine who is the better setter between the two, while possibly deciding on who is Japan's main setter come the time of the Olympics. Ushijima versus Bokuto, the former being a top 3 ace in high school, against a man who while in the top 5 could very well leap into the top 3 when he's at his very best. Ushijima versus Sakusa, a battle between two of the top 3 aces during their time back in high school. Bokuto and Hoshiyumi could also be another matchup, seeing as they were the last two of the noteworthy teams from Nationals back in year 1 with Fukura Dani and with Kawamadai. But that would require Furudate to delve more into who won that year for this scenario to be plausible. And while this might not be highlighted in the same spectrum as the others, the one to watch out for is Kiyomi Sakuza versus Nicolas Romero. Sakuza being the top talent in Japan, whereas Romero is one of the best to come out of Brazil. Before you even get to the main course of the rivalries, the ones leading up to this one between Hinata and Kageyama have their own moment for the readers to look forward to before the main event. Furudate has planted seeds throughout the story with the idea that we would experience a point in time where these characters will be playing volleyball in the next phase of their lives. One of those seeds that I mentioned earlier could also make the Brazil arc come full circle with its payoff in the Olympic arc for another character that we met. As we saw back in chapter 15, Furudate implemented the idea that Brazil will become something in the future that we would deal with which we did as Hinata ventured to Rio to train in beach volleyball to prepare for a shot at making the Olympics. During that period of time, he made friends with the locals and had a partner in the name of Heitor Santana. As the two became friends, 
We learn about Hator's background as he came from parents who played volleyball, and whilst he had the talent to play the game, he never had the same drive as they did. So you would think by that statement, there was no chance for Hator between October 2017 when we first met him, to July 2020 for him to pull off a miracle and make the Brazil national team. Well I'm here to tell you that the possibility of Hator making the national team could still come true. Age in sports is irrelevant as it comes down to whether you can play at a high level consistently. We saw it during Oikawa's retelling of his past of a player by the name of Jose Blanco who was the main reason why he wanted to play volleyball. Blanco was a 38 year old setter for the Argentinian national team when he faced off against Japan. Oikawa seeked his advice when he questioned his desire to continue playing after losing to Karasuno years ago. To shortly summarize it, Blanco says that you can't say you've hit your limit as you still have room to grow both physically and mentally. Don't question yourself until after giving everything you have. Sticking to that belief that you can improve will be a tough act to follow, but it's a whole lot better than saying I give up because I am not gifted. And as we saw what that advice did for someone like Oikawa, and now he's not only playing in the Argentinian league, but he still may have a say on who the main setter of Japan's national team could be between himself, Kageyama and Atsumu, given that the stage he wants to play on hasn't changed after all these years. Now picture this for a moment. Hinata, from when he left Karasuno to the present point in time, has spent two years trying to improve his game in order to get into the V-League. He essentially took a detour to get to where he is today. Who is to say that someone like Heitor couldn't do the same at age 26 to work his way into the Brazil Volleyball League and surprise us by making the Brazil national team come July 2020? If Hinata could pull off such a detour, someone like Heitor could do the same. And previously I brought up Nicolas Romero, who I could see playing a role in a potential Olympics arc. He is someone who has just joined the V-League after many years competing in Brazil. His opponent in this match is very likely to be Kiyomi Sakaza, considering that the former ace of Itachiyama was last year's V-League MVP. A battle to determine who is the best in the world. Held by many as one of the top players in the world, this could set up a match between Japan versus Brazil in the Olympics, possibly for the gold medal. The way that Brazil has been viewed in the series, especially with the transition with a time skip making a scene that the end game likely has to do with the land of the Holy Cross. Now that we're seeing firsthand what a top player from Brazil has to offer, one can imagine that if we were to experience another counter with Romero and Heitor, it'll likely be in Tokyo come July of 2020. Another important aspect that was reintroduced in this arc was the reappearance of Japan's national team head coach. Given the timeline of the story and the match taking place right now, Coach Fuki is scouting the talent who may very well represent Japan at the Olympics. Coach Fuki commented that to Hinata's benefit, that there are setters that can distribute the ball to him at the speed and placement he desires, which means that the unique quick set isn't doomed just to be unique. Seeing the amount of growth in his game after two years, Depending on how he performs in this match, this could be the crowning moment of Hinata's character after all these years. That Coach Fuki recognizes him to be good enough to represent Japan at the Olympics. Of course, there are others in this match that may have a say about that. As to who I believe will make the national team, that's going to be discussed for a future video at a later date. The last of the reasons of my belief of there being an Olympics arc comes down to my deduction that this was the intended plan from Furutate for quite some time. Dating back to September of 2019 when we were still in the Nationals arc, which was taking place in January of 2013. After its ending, we fast forward to March of 2013 with a third year's graduation and then we fast forward afterwards to 2017. I can understand if Furutate wanted to move on from the high school setting and start with a fresh new environment to take his story. In most cases, storytellers are usually about a year ahead in planning when working on their stories. It seems to me that for Furudate to pull off what we got with the Brazil arc, Jackals vs Adlers, and potentially the Olympics arc matching up with the one taking place in July of 2020, this was the perfect time for Furudate to make that transition. This current match doesn't need to be the length of the ones we've gotten with Shira Torizawa or Inarazaki. People tend to forget how much an author can get done in a short amount of time as opposed to stretching its length to fill everything they intend to tell us. We don't need any extra fluff or insight to these rivalries because the story has already given us that. If anything, we should get those things with the characters who are now new to the fold. All in all, it is now a matter of selling the scores on the court between now and July to fit in the possibility of an Olympics arc. As of right now, my best guess on this match's conclusion is around the end of May to the beginning of June. The Olympics start at the very end of July, so we could roughly have between 8 to 10 chapters or even less to prepare for the true final arc of the story. However which way Furudate intends to end Haikyuu, the evidence piling up from the start of this new saga to where we are now gives us enough to believe that there is so much still to tell in one of the best sports series in the medium. So that's pretty much my thoughts on the whole concept and the idea that we could still have an Olympics arc to deal with to end the story, but let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Are you of the belief that what we're seeing right now in this matchup between Hinata, Kageyama, the Jackals, and the Adlers is a fitting way for the story to conclude, or should we be able to get one more story into this mix 
and that being Olympics are. Let me know down in the comments if you agree or disagree with it. And of course, be sure to let me know your own ideas and theories on how you see the story truly ending. Like the video if you enjoy, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new here. If you want to be a part of the weekly experience when it comes to my coverage of the Haikyuu manga as well as the Haikyuu anime, definitely subscribe if you haven't already. Click on the bell of Shandora to stay up to date with everything that goes on the channel. And with that being said, I will catch you guys in the next video. Commodore Les signing off. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, take care. Doing crazy.